you know? I'm craving a margarita. I think we'll build a moisture evaporator. with the hands. Welcome to the Smuggler's Room. I'm Brian Thompson and today the summer is upon us, which means backyard barbecues and ice cold drinks. Now a couple of years ago a friend of mine and I discovered the Redneck Margarita Machine and I was fascinated by the concept of taking a garbage disposal, combining it with an igloo cooler, and generating five gallons of pure cold adult beverage. But it doesn't stop there. I am a geek, as you know, and I've always wanted an excuse to build a moisture evaporator. And I thought, why not combine the two of them? And now you have the moisture evaporator margarita machine. You know what a moisture evaporator is, right? You don't? Roll that geekication. And now it's time for some geekication. In that galaxy far, far away, a common device can be seen on a variety of planets. The moisture evaporator was a device used on moisture farms to capture water from the planet's air. Moisture farmers collected water using moisture evaporators for sale or for use in hydroponic gardens. Luke Skywalker's grumpy old uncle, Owen Lars, for example, was a moisture farmer. That was until he was transformed into charcoal briquettes by the Imperial Stormtroopers, along with his wife, Aunt Beru, causing Luke to follow Obi-Wan on a merry chase throughout the galaxy, ultimately resulting in learning the truth of his father and destroying the Empire as we know it. But I digress. Moisture evaporators were relatively tall and slender devices. Costing up to 500 credits, moisture evaporators came in a variety of models and could reach 3.5 meters in height. The device was stationed at ground level and coaxed moisture from the air by means of refrigeration condensers or chilling bars which generated low energy ionization fields. Patch and droid units were used to communicate with the binary brain of the moisture evaporator and could also interface with external droids. What you really need is a droid who understands the binary language of moisture evaporators. Moisture evaporators were used throughout the galaxy and are most commonly found on dry desert worlds such as Tatooine or Jakku, though they were also found on more lush worlds as well. And now you have received your geekication. You don't have to go all the way geeked out and build the moisture evaporator. But if you want the margarita machine, there's a few things you're going to need. Number one is the garbage disposal stainless steel. The next thing you need is a cooler and then you'll need various PVC pipe at different lengths as well as a valve to be able to control the flow of the margaritas when you're ready to pour. Instructional tutorial is brought to you by the Most Icely Margarita Company, repurposing moisture evaporators since 1977. For this project, we're going to build a box that the cooler sits on top of, and that box will conceal the garbage disposal inside. From there, we'll be able to build the rest of the elements to make this look like a moisture evaporator. So for now, let's just get started on the box and get the cooler and the garbage disposal assembled. <laughs>
right, guys, we've made some good progress here. We got the hole cut in the bottom of the igloo cooler and attached part of the garbage disposal in there, so that's set. We also finished sanding up the box, and I applied this Minwax lacquer sanding sealer to the MDF. That helps seal it because the MDF is really porous, and if you don't seal it first, once you paint it, you'll never get a clean finish on it. I started with the gray primer so that I could help bring out any of the imperfections in the box. So holes from the Bradley nailer, areas where I didn't sand well enough, things like that. Once we fill all those holes and address all those imperfections, we'll spray it again with this red rust looking primer and that'll work as a really good base coat for the project and the look we're going for. The next thing I did is started adding in some detail work like this frame you see on the lid here. And what that frame is, is it's leftover pieces of quarter inch MDF that I saved from my X-Carve. So whatever project I cut out of the X-Carve, I saved the frame. Because when you're doing geek projects like this, these frames can add a level of interest. So you can put the frame on there and then you could take things like this, which are laser cut vents that my friend Greg gave me. And when you apply those to those areas, you get another level of detail. After we get everything base coated and sealed, will be to add greebly bits and things to the box. So that'll be the next step. Let's get it sealed, we'll get a bunch of greeblies put on, and then we can start moving into expanding the rest of this project. While the box and other parts were drying from the second coat of primer, I began work on the base podium and the other cylinders. The base was made from 3 quarter inch plywood along with the discs I carved on the CNC. To make the tube, I wrapped the plywood assembly with a sheet of styrene. This is what I had on hand, but you could wrap this with several types of material as long as it was thin enough to wrap and to hold. I used the same method on the smaller cylinders as I did on the large podium. Finally I was left with the box and the cooler painted, along with the large podium and the two smaller cylinders. Those I'll use to add depth and separation in the construction. Next up the struts, valve system, and disposal install. We build our struts out of one and one quarter inch PVC. That combined with the T-joints, and finally an interesting looking reducer. All the exact parts will be listed on our website. See notes in the description below. Next, we'll assemble our valve and return piping. We use the same pipe dimensions along with a couple of elbows, a valve, and another T-joint. For the electrical work, we start by cutting a power cord. We run the hot, or black, wire into the terminals on the switch. Next, we wire the hot lead from the switch to the brass or gold-colored terminals on the outlet. After that, we take the neutral and barrel it through from the power cord to the outlet. The neutral wire is connected on the silver terminal. Finally, we wire the ground wire to both switch and the outlet. Please keep in mind that I am not a licensed electrician. Take caution when working with high voltage. When in doubt, seek help.
Okay, everybody, we're on the home stretch here. We did the base color red rust paint, and then we applied this kind of sandy cream color to the outside of the evaporator. We need to get the door on, and then we need to go ahead and do the final weathering to the outside of the machine. Oil dripping and stains and things like that. Once we're done with that, we can fire this sucker up and make some margaritas. That was a lot, I know. If you're still watching, thanks for sticking with me. I wanted you to see the whole build start to finish. Next week, we're gonna release a much smaller video that just covers the margarita components and the functionality, as well as releasing all the documents and material lists that you'll need to create your own. So that if you don't wanna build all this awesomeness, you could at least build a smaller margarita machine. The only thing left for me to do now is to whip up some margaritas for you. But before I do that, I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed everything, hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. And now, let's make some adult beverages. Start with a little silver tequila. Some Simply Limeade. A tad bit of orange juice. Guave. Limes. Salt. And your own custom glass. <laughs>